David Harding, Counter Spy, presented by the makers of Old Nick and Bit of Honey Candy Bars. And today, the makers of delicious Old Nick and Bit of Honey Candy Bars present a special offer that means money saved for you. We homemakers know that slicing knives with blades that are hollow ground usually cost $2 and more. But we offer you today a 13-inch stainless steel slicing knife with a special process hollow ground blade for only 25 cents in coin with two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bit of Honey candy bars sent to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. We'll repeat the address and complete details later, so have pencil and paper ready. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. David Harding, Chief United States Counter Spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad, and to secure for every American the rights which are his under our Constitution. Send Mr. Butler in now, please. Mr. Tiffin? That's right, Mr. Butler. Come right in. Sit down. Thank you. I don't mind telling you that your phone call earlier this morning aroused a great deal of curiosity. I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Tiffin. It should make things easier for me. Uh, Tell me, Mr. Butler, why did you come all the way to Kelby, Pennsylvania? Why did you choose the Kelby National Bank? There must be a score of other banks closer to Hollywood which would serve your purpose. Oh, we could have picked any number of banks, Mr. Tiffin. But none would be as authentic for this particular scene we wanted to film. Uh, There's quite a trend, you know, in making the so-called documentary type of picture. uh, Real people in real locations. Oh, yes. Mrs. Tiffin and I have seen several pictures like that. Well, then, you know the realism we're looking for. We're filming the life of pretty boy Loveton. Oh. Yes. Of all his hold-ups, one of the most spectacular took place right here. I'll never forget that day. I was standing near the teller's cage when it happened. That's exactly what we want to show. You and the regular personnel of this bank. Me? Oscar Tiffin in a moving picture? Why not? Could anyone else act the part so realistically? <clears throat> what would this entail on the bank's part, and when would you like to do it? At the most, a two-hour interruption in your normal routine. Oh, is that all? That's all. Uh, we'll shoot the scene without sound, so that any uh, extraneous noises won't interrupt the shooting. Uh, we'll put the sound on film later. As for when we'd like to do it, the sooner the better. Tomorrow morning, if possible. Tomorrow? Yes, I've got my crew standing by, and time is money in any business, Mr. Tiffin. Oh, yes, I wish other businesses would learn that. Of course, tomorrow's Friday, and I imagine with payrolls and everything... Oh, that's not a problem, particularly if it'll only take two hours. Our bank is organized efficiently enough to handle its business even with a little interruption. Then tomorrow will be all right? Yes, Mr. Butler. If you can finish before 11.30... Perhaps even before that. I see. Uh, Will there be any uh, stars in this scene? No, I'm sorry. We're using doubles. Uh, Uh, These will be long shots. We'll take close-ups of the stars back in Hollywood. I see. Uh, Just one thing more. I I want to arrange for a police guard to keep curiosity seekers out of camera range. Oh, yes, of course, certainly. Uh, You see the mayor. He'll take care of you. In fact, I'll phone him and tell him you're coming. Oh, thank you, Mr. Tiffin. That'll be a big help. Good day, sir. Glad to do it. Goodbye. Come in. Come in. Sergeant Lynn? Yep. I'm Mr. Butler. Oh, you're the fellow who's going to turn Kelby Pie into Hollywood Cal. What? <laughs> pie and Cal. Little joke on the abbreviation. Oh, yes. Uh, well, Sergeant... You know all I... about it. Commissioner called and said the mayor said to give you all the cooperation in the world. Well, I can't do that, but I can give you all the cooperation in Kelby, PA. That will be sufficient, Sergeant. Now, what I want... You got him. Give you the best men on the force. 9.30 tomorrow morning, Commissioner said. Is that right? Yes, it is. Uh, Going to need some folks inside the bank, aren't you? Well, there'll be... Well, my wife, Agatha, is a regular depositor there. She'd be glad to help you out. Always hankering after movies anyhow. Be true to life, too. Sticks every cent I make in there. Oh, I'll be happy to have your wife in the picture, Sergeant. Uh, what time you want her to be there? The same time you come with the police. Right. 
9.30 it is. I'd better call her and tell her all about it. Give her a chance to primp up some. You know how a woman is about those things. <laughs> I understand. Uh, see you tomorrow morning, then. Sergeant? Right here, Mr. Butler. We're going to start shoot, shooting in a few minutes. Gotcha. Everything's all set out here. Got officers at both ends of the block diverting traffic, and these men here will hold back pedestrians. Good, good. Now, I'll give you a picture of what's going to happen so that none of your men can get into camera range. I'm listening, Mr. Butler. Uh, how's Agatha doing? Agatha? Oh, oh, fine, excellent. Just the type we need for the picture. Yeah, good. Now, uh, you know we're shooting a silent. Yep. But there still may be plenty of sound made. People yelling, guns shooting, and perhaps even the burglar alarm will be set off. I see. I want to mirror the sound of the excitement in the faces of the people in the picture. Gotcha, Mr. Butler. Now, first, after the robbery, I'll back out of the door there. Uh Then uh, the two cameramen will come after me, and we'll all get in the first car. Right. Then Mr. Black and Miss Smith will come out with drawn guns and get into the second car. I see. We'll both speed off, and as soon as we've turned the corner, you can let things go back to normal. Uh, Unless, of course, we need another take. It's all straight. Uh, One thing more... Uh, Mr. Tiffin and some of the bank employees will come out shouting, help, robbery, police. Uh, Don't get between them and the camera. I I want some shots of that. You bet. Now that that's straight, I guess we'd better get started. See you, Sergeant. Well, Mr. Tiffin, are you all ready? Oh, yes, yes, but I haven't met... Oh, of course. Uh, Mr. Black... Mr. Oscar Tiffin, president of the Kelby National Bank. Uh, Mr. Black is our version of Pretty Boy Loved. How do you do? Ah, yeah. And this is Miss Smith, Pretty Boy's girlfriend. Hello. How do you do? Haven't I seen you someplace before? That's not an original line, Mr. Tiffin. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean... Well, that is... No, really, I'm sure I've seen you in a picture, perhaps. Maybe I've been... Yes, she gets around. Maybe you have. All right, come on, let's get started. Right, Mr. Black. Uh, Mr. Tiffin, uh, will you get in back of the teller's enclosure? Mm, Certainly. All right, now, everybody. I'll be talking all through this. React the way I want you to. Cameras ready? Good. All right. Let them roll. Go to work, Mr. Black. Okay, everybody, this is a stick-up. A uh, little more frightened, please. Keep your hands at your side. Stand still and nobody will get hurt. Ah, uh, that's, that's the way. Uh, baby. Yeah, pretty boy. Get the cages clean out the dough, every cent of it. Right. Good, good. Uh, be awe-stricken, Mr. Tiffin. Come on, baby, step on it. Don't really touch the money. You'll miss Shut it. up, you. But you heard the man, Mr. Tiffin. And I'll tell you a secret. That gun hasn't got blanks, it's got real bullets. What? You see, this picture is going to be the last word in realism. We're robbing your bank for keeps. What? You'll what? notice the cameramen have guns also. And they're loaded too. How you doing, baby? One more case to go. Well, you can't do this. Why not call for the police then? They're expecting it. Or you could set off the burglar alarm. They're waiting to hear that. All right, big shot. You're not on the stage now. Cut the ham and... I got it all. Okay. Now listen. Anybody gets wise, comes running out right after it, stops running permanently. You get it? Let's go. Stick to the plan. I go out first, those two hoods follow me, and then you come. Okay, okay, but step on that ham bone. I'm getting nervous. Come on, you two. How's it going, Mr. Butler? Perfect, Sergeant. Perfect. Agatha, all right? Wonderful. In the car, you two. Hey, member, anyone comes out here before the car starts, gets a bullet out of this gun. All right, get in the bus, baby. Right. That's it. Perfect. All right, let's get out of here. Police! Robbery! Stop them, Sergeant! Hey, that's good, Mr. Tiffin. You ought to make act in your business. Acting? That was no acting, you blockhead. They really held up the bank. What? They weren't actors. They were crooks. They cleaned out the bank. Over $200,000 in payroll money. Don't stand there like a lunkhead. Get after them. Get after them. Yes, Peter? It's got a teletype flash, Mr. Harding. Federal Reserve Bank robbery in Kelby, Pennsylvania. Any details? The amount's over two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand. Why are our nearest counter spy office? Have them send out a mobile laboratory. Right, Chief. I'll order a plane. You stand by for further details. We'll leave for Kelby as soon as we can. <laughs> oh, 
Donna's guts. Did you ever see a look to match that banker's face when I told him it was a real hold You didn't get a load of that dame near the teller's window, Marty. She just passed right out. <laughs> that was Agatha, the sergeant's wife. I'll bet he's hearing from her right now. Look, Marty, let's not be so happy about this. We're not out of it yet. What are you worrying about, Gus? We switched cars, paid off the boys, and still have over 150 grand, and we're heading for New York. Well, I won't be happy until we're there. I don't like it out in the sticks. How much do you pay those guys, Marty? 10000 apiece. For the highest fee any cameraman ever got for such little work. You know, I half wish you'd taken pictures. I'd give anything to see how I look. <laughs> That'd be all we'd need, Dolly. <laughs> pictures of us. Stick to your driving, Gus. We want to make New York by morning. Dolly. What? I did. Did what? Took pictures. What? What's the matter with you two? Nothing. Guys, nothing. I just got rid of my stocking. Oh, that's a dame for you. No kidding, Marty. Yeah. Camera's loaded with film. We should have the whole thing in here. Gus isn't gonna like that. We'll destroy it after we see it. Trouble is, I don't know how to get it printed. Can't send it to a commercial laboratory. I know a guy does that work. Makes movies. Oh, we just can't. Louis's okay. I got enough on him to hang him. He'd do it for free for me. I'd like to see them. Yes, so would I. I better not tell Gus. Not till they're ready, anyway. Hey, what are you two whispering about back there, anyhow? It's a surprise, Gus. I don't like surprises. Why don't you get some sleep? I'm not going to drive this bus all night. One of you will have to take over later. Right, Gus. I'll get some shut-eye and take over whenever you say. Excuse me, folks, while I sleep the sleep of the idle rich. We'll continue our David Harding counter-spy case for Old Nick in a moment. I wish there were some way you could look into your radio there and see what I've got in my hand. Because if you could actually see this stainless steel slicing knife, you'd know what a remarkable value it is. It's guaranteed to compare with knives costing 75 cents to $1. Because of a new secret process, we've been able to have this knife hollow ground. And that's a feature usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. But you can have one of these knives for only a quarter with two wrappers from delicious Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars. Mrs. Clarendon, will you describe this knife for our listeners? As you homemakers probably know, a slicing knife is long and slim, adaptable for use either as a butcher knife or as a carving knife. Our stainless steel slicing knife is nearly 13 inches long. Because it's stainless steel, it's easy to clean. It keeps its silvery luster for a lifetime. Our slicing knife is hollow ground, which means it has an extra keen cutting edge, like a fine carving knife. The handle is polished blonde hard wood, designed to fit your hand smoothly and comfortably with a non-slip grip. I know you'll find this is one of the most useful knives you've ever had in your home. Friends, send today for your stainless steel slicing knife. For each knife you want, send 25 cents in coin and two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bitter Honey. Send to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. Please use coin. Do not use stamps or checks. I know you'll enjoy using your stainless steel slicing knife because many people have sent in a second time. That proves that they like the knife and that they think it's a remarkable value. Remember, that's two wrappers from Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars with 25 cents in coin sent to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. This offer must be withdrawn very soon, so be sure of your stainless steel slicing knife. Now, back to our old Nick, David Harding, counter-spy case. I don't think I'll ever be able to live this down, Mr. Harding, not ever. Now, Mr. Tiffin, don't be too hard on yourself. To be taken in by such a fantastic scheme. Well, a less fantastic scheme probably wouldn't have been successful. You've read how pranksters of open street excavations or imposters have posed as foreign diplomats... As a matter of fact, we have records telling how moving vans have been backed right up to closed down homes and the contents just taken away. All in broad daylight with no attempt at secrecy. They certainly had a bold plan this time, Mr. Harding. Well, that very boldness did half of the criminals work for them. I'm not sure that I wouldn't have been taken in by this scheme myself. I wired to the address this butler gave me and got back a very impressive answer. Well, I'm having that address checked now. Probably it's just a mail drop. Well, the whole thing is so incredible. Well, I... Now, try to calm down, Mr. Tiffin. Oh. See if you can describe the people involved. This man, Butler... Uh... You remember what he looked like? I'll never forget. Let's have the description, then. He was five feet nine or ten, blue eyes, bald-headed, pale complexion, and a little red mustache. Mm -hmm. Very smooth talker. Yes, I can imagine. 
What about the other two who were supposed to be actors? Well, they both had makeup on. The man, I can't tell you much about. He just impressed me as a Hollywood-type gangster. Mm -hmm. And the woman? Now, there's something. I'm sure I've seen her before. Oh, you have? But I can't for the life of me remember where or when. On a trip someplace, perhaps? I just don't know, Mr. Harding. Well, forget about it for a while. Those things can't be forced. Now, anything else you can think of? Something that happened during or before the robbery? Oh, yes. There was one thing that struck me a little queer. What was that? The tough. The man was supposed to be pretty boy Lufton. He told Butler to stop hamming, that he wasn't on the stage. Oh? He made it sound like Butler was the actor instead of him. And he was because he certainly fooled me. And a few other people. Oh, thank heaven for that. It takes some of the edge off my stupidity. Oh, Peter, did you get anything out of the sergeant? Nothing but volcanic eruptions, Chief. I've never seen a man so angry. You can hardly blame him. State troopers just called in. They found two abandoned cars about 20 miles out of town. One of them a station wagon. Both answered the description of the cars used in the holdup. Well, we better get out there, then. Oh, I've got it, Mr. Harding. What? The girl, where I saw her before. Yeah? It was in a picture. An actress? Well, yes. We had a businessman's dinner about four or five months ago. We showed some commercial pictures. She was in one of them. Would you know where you got them? No, I don't, but the secretary of our entertainment committee would know. Well, call him and get the address. Then stay here until you hear from me. I'll get in touch with you as soon as we look over those abandoned cars. Now, they switched cars here, all right, Chief. Bronson from our laboratory says there are impressions of three different sets of tires. Well, there's this makeup kit that interests me. Tiffin said the two actors wore makeup. I don't know much about the theater, but this looks like a professional kit to me. New York manufacturer. We can't try tracing it. Yeah, we will. What about the car, stolen? Yes, the station wagon belongs to a New York florist. Bronson scraped off that picture production's label on the door. The florist's name was underneath. New York. One crook tells another to stop hamming. A makeup kit. Plenty of theater in this crime. The whole idea was theatrical. And it worked. Is there a phone in this laboratory unit? Yes, Chief. Who are you going to call? Tiffin. I want to find out if he's got the address of the place where his club got those films. Uh -huh. Operator. This is Harding, counter spy mobile unit. Please connect me with Mr. Tiffin at the Bank of Kelby. One moment, sir. Thank you. That's a funny thing. When Pretty Boy Lofton held up the bank at Kelby, he got just about the same amount of money. Took him longer to do the job, though. Hello? These modern crooks with their new equipment. Oh, hello, Mr. Tiffin. This is Harding. Oh, yes, sir. I got that address. Good. May I have it? Carl Genoa, 1532 North Broadway, New York. Everything's in New York. Except what? us. We'll remedy that. Uh, Mr. Tiffin. Yes? Can you take time off from the bank for a trip to New York? If it will help solve this, certainly. Well, I hope it will. Pack some clothes. You may be a day or two. Now, Mr. Peters and I will pick you up on our way in. We'll go right out to the airport. Flight two from Boston, arriving on runway three. Plane for Chicago will be delayed ten minutes. You counter-spies work fast, Mr. Harding. I never dreamed I'd be at LaGuardia Airport this evening. Speed's half the battle against crime, Mr. Tiffin. Have you got everything straight, Peter? Yes, Chief. I checked the manufacturer of the makeup kit and then dropped in on Genoa and looked through his film catalog for the girl. Right. And keep in touch with you through Brewster of Theatrical Weekly. That's right. And we're going to see him, Mr. Harding? Yes. He's one of the editors. Theatrical Weekly probably has more pictures of actors on file than any other place. I've asked Brewster to search through those files and pick out every actor's picture that fits the description you gave us. You'll have a thousand of them to look at, at least. I'm willing and able, Mr. Harding. Well, I hope you feel the same way at the end of the night. All right, Peters, get going. I'll hear from you by phone. There you are, Mr. Harding. 827 pictures of actors 30 to 35 years old, 5 feet 8 to 5 feet 11 inches tall, uh, including elevator shoes. Oh, Mr. Brewster, I said bald also. You don't know actors, Mr. Harding. There are no bald ones between 30 and 35. Well, but, they uh, all wear toupees, particularly when they have their pictures taken. Oh, dear me. Well, I, I know, Mr. Tiffin. Do you think you could detect some resemblance even if he is wearing a toupee? It's possible. Well, I'll tell you yes, what. But... You lay aside any picture that looks even faintly like this man, Butler. Then I'll have all those retouched and you can go over them again. Well, I'll try, Mr. Harding. Good. Mr. Brewster, have you got any spot where Mr. Tiffin might look at these pictures undisturbed? Uh, next office, we'll carry the pictures oh, in there. I have... Uh... 
Just put them on that desk and pull up a chair. Uh, thank you. Now, take all the time you want, Mr. Tiffin. Don't overlook a single picture. He might fit. I'll do my best, Mr. Harding. Tell me, Mr. Harding, do you really think an actor engineered this job? Well, the circumstances all point to it. Well, then you're in luck. What do you mean? He'll pull some boner, trip himself up somehow. <laughs> he hasn't so far. The whole scheme's been pretty clever. He's played his part beautifully. And that's the trouble with actors. They let a good part blind them to a bad play. He'll mess up the end some way, whoever he is. You don't seem to be very fond of actors. Me? I love them, adore them. They're the most charming children in the world, but spare me from their thinking. Go on, I could use a little insight into the psychology of an actor. Well, I have the greatest respect in the world for them as actors. As anything else, no. In fact, they should be quick frozen. What? Yeah, like meat. You put them in a pot, let them play it. Then when it's over, you put them in a quick freezer until another pot comes along. <laughs> This way you don't have to pay them or feed them. And all they have to do is act. Which is all they want to do anyway, the screwballs. Well, it's a novel idea, at least. Yes, sir. Uh, actors should be quick for... Uh, probably the call you were expecting, Mr. Harding. You take it. Oh, thank you. Hello? Is Mr. Harding... Speaking, Peter. Oh, Chief. You got something? Yes, but I don't believe it. What? It just doesn't happen this way. What are you talking about? Did the makeup kit turn up anything? Makeup kit? Who cares for that? Chief, I'm calling you from the offices of Carl Genoa. You knew the girl? the girl. Look, Chief, now, I have not been drinking. Get that clear. It makes some sense, Peters. I can't, because I just walked in as Genoa finished processing a moving picture of the holdup. What? That's right. They really took pictures. Oh, no. I said the same thing, Chief, but I'm holding the film in my hand. How could anybody be so stupid? I'll bite. How? You stay there. I'll be over right away. Don't worry. I couldn't move now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Did something happen, Mr. Harding? They actually took pictures of the holdup. See, I knew it. I knew he'd pull a boner. That's so stupid. How could anybody... Act to psychology, Mr. Harding. It's not stupidity, it's vanity. There isn't a ham in the world who'd pass up a chance to look at himself acting. Yeah? Well, that's one picture I'm going to see right now. All right, Genoa. Are you going to tell us where the man who brought you this picture lives? I don't know where he lives, Mr. Hardy. You just print films for anyone? He was sent by a girl I know, Dolly Norton. Of course, you had no idea that there was a bank robbery on the film. No, look, I got nothing to do with bank robberies. I got my own business. I'm sure you have. What kind is it that gives a crook such confidence in you? That's my affair. You want to arrest me, you've got to prove something. At the moment, I'm not interested in the films you're peddling. I'm interested in this man. Why don't you take the picture, make blow-ups? You can put his face in every post office in the country. That's the hard way. You're going to help us do it the easy way. I don't want to get any more mixed up in this than I am do already. you think you have a choice? You're going to give the picture to the man who brought it in. But this and is just not... to make sure you don't get cute, Peters is going to stay here with you. I'll be outside, Peters. If anybody picks up that film, we tail him. Right, Chief. But I don't know when he's coming. Who knows how long he'll have to wait? That's all right, General. We've got plenty of time. If you don't cooperate with us, you'll get plenty of time, too. Dolly, what is it? What's the idea of this meeting? It's a surprise, Gus. What kind of a surprise? Wait till Marty gets it. Gee, that ham? Told you we were finished with him the minute the job was over. Now, Gus, you gotta admit it was a good idea. Look all the dough we made. And I don't care. Ever since we tied in with him, I've been unhappy. The way he thinks. <laughs> Comes at you from left field. Nevertheless, we still got a lot of dough. Yeah, yeah. And I'd rather do a straight stick up for less cash. That's the way it's gonna be from now on. Now, uh, what's this surprise? Well... Come on, come on, Dolly. Don't be cute. <sighs> All right. We got pictures of the job. You what? There was film in the camera. Well, of all the... Are you crazy? Don't get excited, Gus. Nobody will see him but us. Oh, no, you can't be on the level. You... You're kidding, aren't you? No, really. What, what did Marty do? Take him down to the corner drugstore to be developed? Of course not. Told him about Genoa. He did the job for him. Oh, it's another guy, you know, Nadine. Oh, you know Genoa. He can't say anything to anybody about anything. That was what I got on him. Did you know that he was going to do this, darling? No, he told me after. That's him now. Let him in. Hello, Dolly. I got... Oh. I told Gus, Marty. I thought he'd want to see him, too. Come in here, you spindle-headed bird-brained barrymore. <laughs> 
No, no, just a minute, Gus. Hey, give me those films before you play the best death scene you ever played in your life. Oh, look, this whole uh, this whole job was my idea. I, I got some rights in it. That gives you rights in the head. Gus, it's done. At least let's look at the pictures and then we can burn them. What's he going to use for eyes when I get through with them? You got a lot of money for my idea, Gus. And I'll get a lot of time, too. You give me those films or so, help me. No, Gus. Put your gun away, Gus. Well, you heard what? the lady, Gus. Put it away. On the floor. Yes, we wouldn't like to shoot. Who are you? United States Counter Spies. Come on, Gus, drop it. Counter Spies. Now, Butler, you'll give Mr. Peters those films? Right here, Butler. But but how? You, you don't know. You, you can't. Go ahead, Hambone. Get an idea for this scene. But I, I figured something. All the parts. You had a bad final act, Butler. We didn't like it, so we're rewriting it right now. All right, Peters, bring them along. Mr. Harding will return in just a moment. Here's something interesting. We're getting lots of repeat orders for our special offer of a stainless steel slicing knife. Yes, a great many people have sent in a second time. When they received their first one, they were so pleased with it that they sent in for more. Now, I'm not surprised at that because we guarantee this stainless steel slicing knife to be the equal of knives selling at 75 cents to $1. What's more, it has a blade that is hollow ground a feature usually found only in knives costing $2 or more. Yet, we offer the stainless steel slicing knife to you for only 25 cents in coin, with two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bitter Honey candy bars sent to Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. We can make this offer only by special arrangement with a famous cutlery manufacturer. He is the only one in the country who has this new secret process by which long-lasting stainless steel can be successfully hollow ground. We guarantee that this stainless steel slicing knife would compare favorably with knives costing 75 cents to $1, even without the special process hollow grinding. But hollow grinding gives this knife longer life, a keener edge, and greater usefulness. So you're really getting extra value, an outstanding bargain buy. Now remember the address. Old Nick, Box 144, New York 8, New York. For each stainless steel slicing knife you want, send us two wrappers from either Old Nick or Bit of Honey candy bars and 25 cents in coin. This offer must be withdrawn very soon. So be sure of your quick-cut slicing knife. Send your order today. This is David Harding. In the case you just heard, all the parties pleaded guilty. There was nothing else they could do having provided the pictorial evidence themselves. They're serving long terms in the federal penitentiary. And I understand Butler is quite a hit as a leading man at Leavenworth. Tune in next Sunday, same time, same station, for the case of the man with the tattooed eye who successfully buried himself until the counter spies had him fingered by a woman in white. The award-winning case of the recruited nurse... On David Harding, Counter Spy. Tonight's David Harding Counter Spy case was directed by William M. Sweets and dramatized by Palmer Thompson, with music by Jesse Crawford and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. David Harding Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production originating in New York for the makers of Old Nick and Better Honey candy bars. Now a listening reminder. Nobody knows for certain what is going to happen, but Drew Pearson makes astounding predictions of news events to come. Hear Pearson tonight. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.